That's right, it's Tobago Thursdays here on the Now Morning Show. And Tobago, eat more lionfish. Let me tell you about that some more inside your spotlight on Now. Now, it's been over 10 years since the invasive lionish was first, first, first sighted in Tobago's waters. Following its sighting locally, the Institute of Marine Affairs took the lead in controlling and managing the invasion through scientific research and public education and awareness. This morning, we're going to be talking about the development of the lionfish fish pot with marine biologist Dr. Faranaz Solomon. Dr. Solomon is a marine biologist with significant experience in fish biology and fisheries. She has considerable experience working with communities stakeholders, especially fishers and the fishing communities in managing fisheries resources. Dr. Solomon, good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good, thank you. So we're talking about lionfish. Yes, I know are. everybody wants to know if we can cook it and eat it. Yes. <laughs> but before we get to that, um, it has been described as an invasive species. Tell us exactly why it's considered that way. An invasive. Yeah. So, so all, uh, all, um, all animals, right, have what we call, including the lionfish, have what we call a native distribution range, right? It's a particular geographic area where they usually occur, right? And sometimes they occur outside of this area for a number of reasons, right? And once they occur outside this, uh, this their native distribution range, we refer to it as an alien species. We say it has been introduced, it's non-native. And then if in its new area or habitat, it causes some sort of... Um, harmful effects, whether it's to the environment, to, uh, to human health, or to um, the ecology, right? We say it's an invasive species, and so the lionfish is like that. So the lionfish, actually, it's native to the Indo-Pacific. So this would be areas like um, Japan, Australia, Singapore, that area of the world. And it was introduced, we are located here in the Atlantic. Yes. And so it was introduced into the Atlantic late in the 1980s in Florida waters, most likely um, due to accidental releases from the aquarium trade. And if you've seen a lionfish, you would understand why why it's so prized in the aquarium trade. It's very pretty. Yes, beautiful. Very st exactly. Yes, yes. Right? So they would have taken it from the Pacific to the Atlantic. Yes. Right? And with like, there are many examples of that and then being released into the natural environment. So since the 1980s, um, it has spread throughout the Caribbean and throughout the Gulf of Mexico. Trinidad and Tobago was actually the last island in the Caribbean to be invaded. And if you look at our location, that's understandable. Yes. Right? It was sighted, I think, in Tobago in 2012 and then one year later in Trinidad, oh. right? And last time I checked, it's actually all the way down, halfway down the coast of Brazil. So most likely- So it's moving. It's yes, moving, so it yeah. keeps dispersing, yes. it will spread, right? So most likely, I think with Brazil, the limiting factor might be temperature because it's actually a tropical <coughs> species. And right. as you go more south, it tends to get a bit colder, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. And of course, it's invasive, not just alien, because there are impacts. The uh, main problem with lionfish is that it eats, uh, it eats a lot. It's what we call a generalist, voracious predator. It eats anything. So they've opened up the lionfish and look at the stomach contents and found like over 80 different types of fish. Wow. And, right, to yes. eat anything. Yes, yes. Right? So if you think about an organism in the environment eating anything, it's going to eat a commercial species, it's going to eat species. Commercial species, like, like what? Tell us exactly what type of thing right. they eat. Right, so it's eating anything. So it would be like, um, so they've eaten groupers, wrasses, snappers, they're found in the stomach of lionfish. And yes. those are the kind of um, species we would we fish eat, yes. commercially here yes. in, in Tobago. Right? And some of the fishermen, um, so one of, in, in developing this project, we actually had fishermen who came to us and said they think that the lionfish has had an impact on their fisheries. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't done any kind of impact studies in Tobago. I mean, we've done control and things like that, no impact studies. So we want to do some of that in our new project yeah. coming on. But other places in the Caribbean have certainly seen a reduction in their native fish abundance mm -hmm. because of the presence of lionfish. Now, while they, 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 they eat a lot, they, they also grow and, and, and spawn faster than, right. than other fish. Right. So the, the thing where I said, so invasive species, right? So you can have an alien species moving into a new environment right. and not causing any problems. But there are certain characteristics of an invasive species, and lionfish has its own. Mm. It grows quickly. Yes. It becomes mature at a very early age. It produces a lot of eggs. It actually spawns all year round. Mm. So a single lionfish could actually produce up to 2 million eggs per year, female, right? 
So all of those things is why it's so successful in its invasion. Yeah. Right? It allows it to spread um, in terms of uh, density and abundance. Some places in Tobago had very high abundance when we did the initial surveys many years ago, mm -hmm. and um, usually higher densities than some of its native range as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we move on to the uh, studies that you're doing, I also want to touch on something you mentioned. You mentioned that trade, but I also uh, read somewhere that it might be part of the illegal uh, exotic animal trade as well. Is it part of that as well? Well, Where they're kind of bringing these things illegally and maybe it's lost at sea and so they find their way in different homes? Okay, so with marine animals, you have two main uh, methods of transferring um, alien species and right. it would be ballast water with ships because many fish have like a larval stage that could be in the water and what they do is that they intake and... Um, and, and release water in order to balance ships. Right. And if you come from a, a foreign place and you take in water and then you release the water in another place, you don't know what pathogens or organisms are in that water. So that's one way. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, the illegal pet trade is a, is a huge thing, right? Um, people do bring in things. You're supposed to get a license, actually, yes. to bring in these things, right? And then um, it's with the understanding that you don't release it into the marine, into the natural environment. Tilapia is another one that's actually... It was introduced into Trinidad. It was brought in for farming purposes. And you know, tilapia is everywhere it now. It is, yes. Exactly, yes. right? Wow. So there, there are many examples. Um, if you talk about non-marine, you're talking about things like the mealy bug. Yes. Then we have the African uh, the snail snails. that we're dealing mm -hmm. with. And so when the airport, they tell you don't bring in live material, it's for a reason. Yeah. Because you can unintentionally bring in things that have socioeconomic impacts. Yeah. Oh, and we're seeing that, of course, with the lionfish. Exactly. Now, tell us about some of those uh, the, the projects that you're doing to monitor and control that species. Okay, so since it was first um, cited in Tobago in 2012, you know, the Institute of Marine Affairs, we have taken the lead in um, controlling and management, right? So under the previous project, we would have done lionfish density surveys. Um, we did a lot of public education and awareness. A lot yeah. of products were um, developed. We had a jingle. If you call the IMA, you would hear a jingle about eating the lionfish <laughs> on the phone if they put you on hold, right? Um, we trained fishermen on how to handle um, the lionfish. And so we would talk a little bit about whether it's poisonous or um, venomous. Yes, yeah? yes. So it has venomous spines, but the flesh is, flying, is fine to eat. So once you cut off those venomous spines, you can eat it. I've eaten it several times. I'm still here. <laughs> it's a lovely fish to eat, yes. right? You just have to be careful how you're handling it. And once you take off the spines, it's okay. But the fishermen will know how to handle it. So if it yeah. is, even if it is you purchase it from them, they will take right. it out you for can you. Ask them, you right. can, yes, they can remove the, uh, yes. remove the spines before. And it's actually, most of the venom is actually on the tip of the spines kind of mm. thing. And um, I've read the literature that says if you freeze it, um, it, the, the venom as well, um, it becomes inactive. And I actually have handled lionfish with some of the, the spines still um, on after freezing. And I haven't had a problem, but right. I will still tell people to cut it <laughs> off for safety reasons. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And so we have we taught fishermen how to do that kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? And then we have uh, done a lot of work in terms of promoting its culinary use. Right? It's a very nice tasting fish. We've had tasting events. People like how it tastes, right? Um, so we have promoted that a lot, yeah. right? And um, is it a is it a versatile fish? Like, can you bake it? Can you stew it? Can you curry it? Like, can you yes. do different things yes, with it? Yes, you can okay. do different things with it. And w and one of our um, we had this billboard campaign, and we work with chefs to develop different ways of preparing it. Yeah. I personally like it deep fried with a batter. I find mm. it best. Yes, like that. Um, maybe a deep fried thing, <laughs> but yes. Right? So yeah. yes, you can. Um, Yes. Now, now, Dr. Solomon, you are glowing when you're talking about eating the lionfish. So I'm going to assume it's tasting really, really it is, good. It is a tasty fish. Is it tasting similar to a certain type of fish? I mean, uh, how, how would you describe it? People compare it to grouper. So it's like a white meat and right. it's very flaky. Right. Right. So people have compared it to grouper. Grouper. Is, yeah. it, is it very bony? Like, do you get the bones no, or you not? Do the right. like you do the filet. Right. you do the filet. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's how we can do it. Yes. All right. Nice. Now, while it's been sighted in Tobago, you mentioned that there's some in Trinidad. Is the population as large as the one in Tobago? Okay, so it's, it really has to do with habitat. It likes coral reefs as well as um, a rocky kind of habitat. So in Trinidad, it would be in, on the, um, the um, northeast coast right. as well as on south, some, some places on the east coast where you have like rocky habitats kind of thing. Um, when we did the surveys back 
like this was like about seven years ago, no, the populations, the highest densities we found were actually in Northeast Tobago. Northeast Tobago. Yes. And we were talking about the impacts in terms of how they, they, they eat everything inside, basically, how they, are, um, uh, they have a negative impact on the coral reef as well. Any other impacts this lionfish can have on our reefs, our ecosystem, that sort of thing. So that would be the main impact, eating commercial fish species yeah. as well as affecting coral reef health by eating ecologically important species. This would be the main two main things and you know both fisheries as well as tourism is very important to Tobago I mean people pay to see to do dives and to see coral reefs and you want to see the big pretty fish yes, right yes so yes nice and in terms of new projects or ongoing projects that the IMA has are you looking into anything more because I know that you mentioned earlier that the fishermen are seeing an effect in terms of the um, the, the, the limits or the number of fish they're getting now that the lionfish is there right. is there going to be an impact study on that soon to see if in fact the lionfish is causing you know that kind of reduced number of fish that they're getting. Okay, so that one is a little bit difficult to do if you didn't try if you didn't already start previously with a baseline. Right. So that's a bit difficult. So what we're gonna do is um, we're going to look at stomach contents to see exactly what it is, the type of species that they are eating, whether it's commercial or um, or ecologically important ones. We haven't done that before. Right? This new project though focuses on um, trying to alter so in Tobago you use fish pots right and we're going to try to alter the design of the fish pots to try to increase the capture of lionfish mm -hmm. so normally how especially to depths that are not um, frequented by say commercial divers because how you catch lionfish presently would be that you use a pole spear and you either scuba or free dive and mm -hmm. so you're limited in terms of your depth Right. right, and the fish pot fishermen they go deeper and they are indicating that they are finding lionfish in their fish pot. Now, when you say fish pot, is it an area where you can go to catch the fish? Fish pot is the um, device they ah. use to catch and then they set it in different areas. Okay, right. Right, and so I, talked to, I spoke to a fisherman yesterday that we want to invite. We're going to have a stakeholder consultation yes, soon. Yes, And he said that yes, they do catch in their fish pots. Wow. Right, and so we want to increase the capture. The thing is, yes, you can eat lionfish, right? But it's about capturing it as well because scuba is kind of costly. Mm -hmm. And so that sums up the price. Right, and if you kept more with the fish pots as well, it would help more with the control as well and maybe help with the price a little bit too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so you want to work on so that. So is it that individual people can go out there and, and try to catch the, the landfish as well? Um, that is how it's been done, yes, um, presently. Without being a fisherman? Like but if you yeah, just a, recre a, a recreational diver, yeah, recreational yeah. divers do it all the time. The people I dive with recreationally sometimes, it's a hobby for them. They see it as um, contributing to conservation of right, the reef. Yes. And every time they go to Tobago to dive, they catch lionfish and that's what we have for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so you catch the lionfish, you, you take all the yes. spine, you remove that spine, the spike, yes. and then you curry it, so you deep fry it, and that deep kind of thing. We like to deep fry. Wow. It's easy. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So we do have lionfish for dinner, and everybody I've introduced it to, I tell them, try it. They've told me that they love it. That they love it. Okay. Yeah. But apart from, I mean, what else can we do? So of course we're saying that, yes, you can go out there, you can catch it. Yes, yes. you can buy it from, your, from yeah. your area fisherman. I mean, what else can we do to manage and control this spread? So the main thing really is, as you mentioned, it's about if you are a recreational diver, and you can catch lionfish and take it out to the waters. Yes, that would be great. That <laughs> helps, in, helps in the control and management, yeah. as well as eating it if it's uh, available. Because there are a number of people as well who started doing um, lionfish products. I remember I had like a, a fish, I think it was like a, a, a fish ball as well. Right, people do fish bites with it. Right, right. Um, there's the feelies as well. There are a couple of places that sell it. Um, there's a restaurant in Tobago that serves it. So as part of this project as well, we want to like put all this information together mm -hmm. and let people know where they can go and how they can support this whole conservation effort with regards to the lionfish. Yeah. Right? And is the lionfish the only one that is causing that much damage, or is there other types of invasive species as well? So at present, the lionfish is like I said, not all alien species become invasive yeah. but at present it's just the lionfish more or less in the past we did have another marine invasive it's a mussel called pernavirus it's a green mussel but i think we cooked it a lot as well because it's solomon so all your suggestions <laughs> what she can is eat. cook it and eat it deep yes. fry it make yes. something and eat it um this uh, chef jason peru has right. been um doing a lot of work with lionfish and publicizing the preparation of lionfish as well. They did some filming in Tobago right, kind of thing. Right. It really is it, it is a nice fish. I would recommend 
to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and will the IMA doing any more um, public education or public awareness drives just to get people on board with this? We will try. We will try to yeah. do that definitely throughout the project. We would have um, some more uh, engagements, public education and awareness. Mm -hmm. um, they sometimes say derbies in Tobago, um, which is basically a lionfish um, catching competition okay. where spearfish is got and catch as much as they can and they get a prize for it. Nice. We've, held, we've had a couple of those in the past. So we will run to have one of those again, hopefully <laughs> soon. Or if not, we will definitely be there in our presence, supporting yeah, yeah. Any, any efforts like that. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Solomon, any closing thoughts before we go? No, I'm, I'm good. Just cook it and eat it. <laughs> cook it and eat it, yes. <laughs> yes. And you heard it from Dr. Farana Solomon, of yes. course, a marine biologist at the Institute of Marine Affairs. Remember the lionfish. If you see it, if you don't know how to handle it, please go to your local fisherman. But remember, we need to get rid of this invasive species, the lionfish. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Cook it and eat it.